Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. Do you feel like there's just too many monitors to look at these days? Every single time that I look at new monitors, I'm bombarded by model numbers that just don't make any sense. Well, they, they make sense to me, but maybe they don't make sense to everyone. It's really easy to be confused by certain wording with things like Ultra HD 4K, but what does that even mean? Well, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button right now and turn on that little bell to receive notifications. We upload multiple times per week, so make sure you're subscribed. Anyway, just because it says it's 4K and it's cheap, it doesn't always mean that it's good. Remember, 4K is only a resolution. But what if you found a monitor that was a combination of those three things? In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the AOC U3277PWQU10-bit 4K display. <sighs> See, even, even that name <laughs> was way too hard to say. This video is brought to you by Cooler Master and the Master Keys MK750 Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. Featuring a fast, modern Type-C connection, comfortable magnetic wrist rest, and on-board macro recording. The Cooler Master Master Keys MK750. Game smarter, not harder. Find out more about the keyboard in the link in the description. Okay, let's address the elephant in the room. No. No, not me, Fun Bucket 09. I didn't know elephants had moustaches. Anyway, the sheer size of this thing is a little bit confronting at first. It's a huge monitor by monitor standards. But that brings me to the first thing that I like about this monitor. I like that a 100% scaling on this monster. I don't feel like I need a magnifying glass to see anything. One of the best things about this screen is its ability to handle 10-bit content. Okay. Let me explain what that is. Typically with high contrast images on your screen when you have a display that is only capable of 8-bit content, which is almost pretty much every other monitor on the planet, you will see a bit of banding and artifacts around those high contrast areas. So as Matt Otter would do, let's change gears and pump the brakes. This monitor is not designed for gaming. It's all about content creation. As well as being a 10-bit display, it also is one of the very few monitors in this price range, well, actually in any price range, that has native support for DCI-P3. So DCI-P3 is basically the colour standard that every single movie studio uses when producing movies for consumption in both the cinemas and on UHD Blu-ray. Wait. Did I just talk about Blu-ray? Who even still uses physical media these days? Anyway, all of this might be a bit of an assault on your brain and you might be trying to process all this information. But here is the reason why we decided to get this monitor and add it to one of our editing workstations. Not only does it display and support 10-bit 4K, all of our camera gear that we use to make content for this channel is also in 10-bit 4K. If you're creating content like we are, it's important to be able to see what you're actually capturing. Okay, let's move on before I get too stuck about talking about color spaces for too long. What do you actually get for your hard-earned money? Let's take a closer look and see what's in the box and let's have a look at the monitor itself. Alrighty, let's get into some <laughs> I'm gonna call this an unboxing, but you guys are gonna see how uh, awkward this is for me because I'm not real good at this. So yeah, let's have a look at what's in here first. Um, I think this was a VGA or DVI cable, I don't know, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, a another cable, uh, I think this one was possibly a HDMI cable, I, I can't tell from here. Can you guys tell? Oh, oh look, it's a snake. Why is, is this unwrapped actually? I have no idea. Ooh, what else have we got in here? Hmm, I think that might be a DVI cable. I I'm just gonna put it out there. There's pretty much a cable for every single possible thing that you could ever possibly connect to this monitor in the box, which is actually pretty, pretty crazy when you think about it, right? Not many monitors I've seen have all of these cables. A CD, really, like, when was the last time you used a CD or a driver disc for a monitor? Random. I didn't even have an optical drive in my computer anyway. So yeah, that, that's of no use to me. What else is... Oh, ooh, a mini jack cable. Cool, I, I, I guess. 
Uh, I, I, I don't know. There's another HDMI cable. Why are there so many cables in this box? It, it, it makes no sense. It's pretty crazy. All right, let's try and get this out. As you can see, like I, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, pretty bad at opening things up. This is the base plate that the monitor connects to. This thing is like really, really heavy, which is kind of good because you want it to be heavy to anchor such a big monitor. All right, let's see if we can figure out how to get this monitor out of the box now. Oh, this looks kind of, kind of, dude, w w what are you doing? Why are you pulling it out like that? I, I guess it, it could work. Well, it, it did eventually anyway. Looks pretty awkward, right? Just like sitting on the ground. <laughs> I'm afraid something might drop out of the bottom when I'm doing it like this. And we lift the lid off the uh, monitor and here we go. This is the monitor. No, well, it's not because you can't see it as it is right now. So what I'm going to do first is attach the monitor stand to the base plate. And yeah, I'm going to give you guys something that everybody loves, some ASMR. Goodness, you ready? I'm a little bit surprised that the monitor attaches to the stand with screws, but I mean, it's a heavy monitor, so I guess it kind of makes sense. Anyway, it doesn't matter, like, it, it, yeah. Let's have a look at the non-display base connectivity first. You've got four USB ports for all of the USB porting you could possibly imagine. I mean, this is very, very good for a professional grade monitor. And also, you'll see all of the connectivity here. You've got a mini jack, a VGA, HDMI, DisplayPort, and DVI. Back to you, Nick. Like I mentioned earlier, this monitor isn't aimed at gamers, it's aimed at those out there who want that extra screen real estate with exceptional color reproduction, who are creating captivating content. Or for those people who have like four monitors on their desk who effectively want to replace it with a single screen or just because it's really cool and really, really big. At the end of the days, it's got connectivity for days. <laughs> and it's got basically every other connector you can possibly imagine, except USB type C. It's okay, we'll forgive you this time. It's got excellent color reproduction, and with a price tag that's only 499 USD, it's my pick for 4K displays for content creation and not Gaming. I just want to make that clear before you guys in the comment section say how bad it is for gaming. I really, really want to reinforce that. If you want us to cover more gaming related peripherals, let us know in the comments. Also, if you're interested in grabbing one of these screens, there is a link in the description down below. Anytime you click one of those amazing Amazon links, you help Claire buy extra ingredients to bake chocolate muffins. And if you're nice, she might even give you some. <laughs> also, I wanted to mention that we've got a really cool giveaway with our friends at Cooler Master coming up, so make sure you're subscribed to find out when we're giving away some awesome stuff. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and help us get to our measly small subscriber goal of 1,000 subscribers. We're almost there. If you didn't like this video, tell us what you didn't like about it. Anyway, once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm Nick with Gear Seekers. <laughs> you peek, we seek. And I want to go edit this video with this monstrous screen. I will eventually, just wait. <laughs>